Today on Twin Cam, we're going to be taking a big step towards getting Melody's engine back in and the car back on the road. And in this one, we're going to be refitting all the bits to the engine. So things like the thermostat housing, the fuel pump, all things that have been taken off in order to allow me to paint the engine or to repair things this and there. So the alternator needs to go back on, for example. And then finally, of course, we're going to put the engine back on the gearbox, do the whole clutch engine end of the engine, and then next time we're going to be putting the engine back in the car. So let's just get going. We'll begin with the fuel pump on the back of the engine and this is the standard kind of mechanical pump you'll find on almost any classic British car driven off the camshaft by this arm. There's a new spacer block to sit behind it and I'm not even chancing any oil leaks because this is an A-series. So I'm being as liberal as humanly possible with the gasket sealant. For those who care, the horizontal port is the inlet and the one at 45 degrees is the outlet. Next is the alternator, which I'm sure many of you will remember was new at the end of 2021. After only a day of ownership, Melody's battery was knackered and I diagnosed it by simply switching the lights on as the charge lights started glowing. I'm using the same belt because, as I said, it was new not long ago. The thermostat housing is something I've meant to fix ever since I bought the car as it leaks quite a bit. While we're dealing with the cooling system however, I took the time to flush out both the radiator and the heater core and it wasn't pretty. Turning back to the engine however, and it was almost perfect, probably proving the ability of the hose to dislodge rubbish by back flushing. But back to the housing and despite buying a new thermostat, I'm actually going to keep using the old one, partly because it works, but mainly because the new ones have a bit of a reputation. So everything can go back together with a pair of new gaskets and more liberal use of the sealant. You can't see that though, because I got distracted as a very large man came to help. Don't worry about this shot appearing to show an engine resting atop its gearbox. We'll get to that for reasons that'll become very apparent. For now, we're going to install a new oil pump. This hides behind the clutch casing, so this is the best time to do it. And the oil pressure light did always take a second to go out, so this is cheap insurance. I can't broadcast any of this as the language will just get me demonetized, but this is primed with a little fresh oil and it's secured to the end of the camshaft with its gasket and two bolts. So we're ready for the engine, which is just off camera, to go back on the gearbox. Now, be careful when doing this because this is a little o-ring, rubber o-ring, that goes around the oil pickup there. It would be a nightmare if you forgot to fit that and then put the engine on. Wondering why I'm wearing different jeans. Different day, different week. Brilliant. But I did try to fit the engine and I failed. And it's good that I failed because now I can do this because I remember the day after that I hadn't put the little o-ring in. So it's actually a good thing that I didn't fit the engine because that would have made it a nightmare. And without this on the oil pickup, these things make no oil pressure. So. I'm very fortunate that I remembered that. So, engine and gearbox, take two. You can tell this has been done before by the oil resting where the crankshaft lies. Anyway, there are two paper gaskets, again being liberally siliconed, on the front and back of the gearbox that seal the mating faces. On the clutch end, i.e. the one closest to us, there is no gasket or seal, as this is still an open part of the oil system. But on the timing end, we have that U-shaped seal on the floor to keep the oil in and the driveway clean. With everything checked and double checked, we can rewind to before and make the power unit whole again. There are a raft of nuts and bolts, some of which are different sizes holding this thing together. So while not 100% certain of success, we've done everything to the best of our knowledge. 
However, our folly did result in one serious problem. While I reinstall the drop gears, let me tell you a story. So as I've already mentioned, I have already put the engine on the gearbox once. Today is the second time that's happened because of that O-ring. Um, but the first time we put it all back together, it was all rushed and horrendous and yeah, it wasn't going well. And what happened is that when I took the transfer casing off, um, I made sure the bolts were in the same pattern as they came off, for obvious reasons. Um, but when I put it back together, it turns out that I had somehow managed to confuse the two bottom bolts and the two top bolts. Now that wouldn't sound like much of an issue, but the bottom two bolts are in the gearbox and the top two bolts are in the engine. And the problem with that is that the gearbox is aluminium, the engine is cast iron, so they use different threads. The engine uses UNF, the gearbox UNC. So while they're both 5 sixteenths, they didn't work. And what happened was that one of them, I completely managed to mess up, you be able to see that. I've not got the camera on the right setting, so you're probably not going to be able to see it. But that's not the issue. That's knackered, that bolt, so I've got new bolts, but that, that's not great. Um, yeah, if you can't tell because it's not focusing, that's a snapped bolt. There you go. So um, that was in the engine. Uh, as I'll show you with pictures now, I've managed to get that out um, because then what it was showing over the top of the it was out of the block a little bit at least, so that's good. And now we're going to tap it out um, just to make sure that we've still got the threads. We're pretty confident that the threads are still there and we've not completely knackered it. We need to helicoil it. Um, but yeah, so let's try and tap it out. We've never done that before. Mm. It'll do. Do you want to do this again, Josh? I'll do it. Yeah, well, you can have a go. <laughs> it's not my block. <laughs> Yeah, you can do it the other side, it seems to go in properly. That looks good. That looks threaded. Oh. Take it away. Oh no. I can hear it cutting. I think it's one before. Fascinating. Oh. It seems to be going really easily, so oh, I'm well, guessing that's, that it's that's just, good. just following, yeah, following the... the... No, it's not. Go on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You're making noises! <laughs> it's an A-series block. I can't afford to replace it. I'll have to replace it with a properly <laughs> knackered 998. That's the spirit. Oh, it's such a weird sensation. Oh. Should we get it out? Should we try it? Should we try to get it out and try it? Uh, remember, one of them's coarse thread up there. Right? Yeah, I, I can still tell the difference now. Yeah, just bring more there. There you go. That's that's one of the ones we want. The finer pitch ones. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that is buttery smooth. Oh, that's beautiful. And yeah, that's about the thickness of the transfer casing, isn't it? -da! Yeah, it'll, it'll work, and if not, we can Mid. just That one is the one we need to that do, was, I think, isn't it? Th this was only the snap bolt. That was the one that has the one that, the one that is, is still whole. The one that I showed you for how messed up it was. You did get new bolts, didn't you? Like the, the ones you crushed. These are the ones that I accidentally put in a gearbox, but yeah. because of coarse thread, fine thread, these are fine. Right. And those threads are fine. So I've got new bolts in the transfer case. That's of the cool. ones that I wrecked up here. Obviously one of them snapped, so I can't use that one. No. But it's an experience for both of us, this. I like this. It's it clever, a, isn't it? It was a really cheap set that people say, oh, it works once. Oh, yeah. Or twice. People have said, like, it works like three times and then it, it, it won't anymore, so. Oh, well, that's all right. Yeah, exactly. You don't really buy this sort of stuff to keep, do you? Exactly. I, I imagine that's the same with all of them. I only need it twice. Mm. For each hole. It just, right. just, just seems to be following the threads really nicely. I'm not going to put any force into it, it's also not really doing much cutting. God, I hope this works, Chris. Beautiful. <laughs> Happy days. Look at that! Yeah, it's just against a bit more because that's perfect. Yeah. Ta -da! Lovely job, Luke. We are golden. 
Tension subsiding, we can put the new gasket on the transfer casing slash clutch housing, smother the bottom half in yet more sealant, and finally, reattach it to the power unit. While we're in here, it would be silly not to change the clutch. So I, of course, have the flywheel here uh, with no clutch and no pressure plate attached to it because I've sent them away. And in return, I have a nice new one in this box. There's a clutch release bearing. I've already bought one of them, so that's useless. That's a spare now. But in here, I have a shiny new clutch plane. Well, not shiny, but you know, fresh. And with it, is a new pressure plate. So this can all go together. Now there is a bit of a danger with me is that I don't, I don't know because I've not experienced it, um, but everyone is very careful about the balancing of the clutch and the pressure plate and the flywheel together. And a lot of people say that realistically, you can get a span on that if you like. Yeah, I've got it off. Um, <laughs> a lot of people say that you should balance the assembly together because it can cause vibrations and generally not be very nice. So I'm hoping that it's all right because if it's not all right, then I've got to take the flywheel off again and I don't want to do that. Notice there, that says flywheel side. So, it should go down on there like that. The flywheel assembly all bolts together, then bolts as one to the end of the crankshaft. As you've just seen, the clutch plate rests on the flywheel, then the pressure plate is bolted down on top, clamping the clutch in place, so we need to make sure we've centered the clutch as best we can, and we're not going to tighten the bolts all the way yet. Despite that, however, it is all spring-loaded, so every few turns of the bolts makes the whole assembly bang and jump. It seems this is all going well, but it isn't. When I sent away the clutch, I accidentally left the central boss bolted to the pressure plate, so there isn't actually anything to secure this to the crankshaft. This shot is of us realizing what I'd done, so with the engine crane hired and waiting, we decided to fit the engine without its clutch. So that'll come next time. For now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description, and I'll have more videos coming along soon.